Hey guys, Lightane here, and today I'm going to go back in time, long before cell phones and when the internet was a household necessity. That's right, all the way back to 1995. In this time, we had some pretty great TV shows. We had Friends, we had Rugrats, we had Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and Ren and Stimpy. But today, I'm going to be talking about a great show called... In this time, we had some pretty great TV shows. We had Friends, we had Rugrats, we had Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and Ren and Stimpy. But today, I'm going to be talking about a great show called Spellbinder. Spellbinder is a show that came out in a children's television boom in Australia. It was cheaper to make children's television shows and it would cause a greater return for the people that were making them. In Spellbinder, they teamed up with a Polish group in order to create the show that I'm talking about today. In Spellbinder, we follow a boy named Paul who is a massive science geek. On a trip to the Blue Mountains, he and his best friend Alex decide to prank a few girls at night. This causes some strange static electricity disturbances and a portal opens up. Paul checks it out only to be transported to another world. This is the Spellbinder world, a parallel world to our own where everyone speaks English, which is good. This is a world similar to a dark age when people were uneducated and innovations and inventions are outlawed. Only the Spellbinders are allowed to make anything new. They have suits and ships that were built a long time ago by much smarter people that vanished. The current Spellbinders just try to keep it all up and running, but they don't really understand how any of it works. Paul is constantly in danger because he thinks outside the box and explains things like a solar eclipse with science. The Spellbinders don't like this idea and Ashka, the main antagonist of the series, wants Paul after he demonstrates how to make gunpowder. She plans to use this and any other things that he can teach her to rule the world! Being chased and hunted by the Spellbinders, he befriends a girl named Rihanna, who helps him and teaches him about this new world. One of the higher Spellbinders, Corion, also befriends Paul and realizes that with his help, they can fix the problems that they have been running into. While this is going on, Alex and one of the girls that they pranked named Katrina have been working in our world to find a way to bring Paul back. Katrina is sure that she saw Paul through a portal, but of course, nobody believes her. This show, although it was only one season, was split into two halves. The second half is when Paul gets back home, but Rihanna comes with him him and the portal back to her home closes. Paul then has to teach Rihanna about our world when she doesn't get lost or taken away and try and find a way for her to get back home whilst no one around him believes what happened. Rihanna goes on plenty of adventures in this time, a lot of the comedy comes out from the misunderstanding nature of Rihanna in our world, and whilst trying to get back to her home, Ashka also enters our world and starts causing mayhem. Ashka learns about science and that Paul's dad is a great scientist. She comes to him with schematics of a power suit in order for him to build her one that is better than the Spellbinders in order to rule them. Will she succeed? This is a show that I used to watch a lot as a child, but it faded from my memory. All I could really remember about this show was the bad guy Ashka and the power suits. A lot of people that I show this to recognize the power suit and recognize the bad guy, but none of them remember the show. So when I stumbled across this, of course I had to watch it. First off, even though this is a children's show, it's not a cheap looking show. They have lots of props and costumes and a vast number of locations that they go to and even some special effects. Unlike a lot of other children's TV shows which are either animated or really for little children. The acting for this show can be a little stilted at times because most of the actors are children, but at least Paul and Rihanna deliver good performances for the most part. Ashka as well as the villain is also a very, very strong character and she's probably the best acted out of everybody in the show. There are a few side characters which aren't very good at acting, like Alex's brother or the cab driver, but hey, they can be forgiven. The bad thing about this, however, is that some of the character interactions are just crap. Whilst a lot of the acting is alright, a lot of the drama is way overplayed and the situations are way over the top. Like when Paul and Katrina have a fight, he is way overacting. Then the next day, the stink faces she pulls are incredible. When Paul gets back home, he tells a lot of people about the spellbinders in their world, but of course, no one believes him. They all think that he is crazy and is making everything up, but by the end of the season, when he realizes that his dad and Ashka are working together, he goes ballistic. No one believes him, thinking that Rihanna is imaginary and the Spellbinders are part of his dream. This is hilarious and way overacted. Paul just can't catch a break and you can honestly feel the frustration coming off of him and that his dad is just so thick and refuses to trust him. What have you done with Rihanna? I don't know what you're talking about. You're a liar, Paul! Don't fight! Look, you're frightening your sister. Don't worry, everything will be all right. 
It also doesn't make too much sense as Paul was telling his dad about the spellbinders and power suits and then a week later Ash goes talking about similar things. That doesn't trigger any bells. Hello. This is also a bit of a strange show for children because it was a series you had to watch each episode in order to understand what was going on. As such, it wasn't one to teach lessons to children but rather to take them on an adventure. If anything, there is be nice to others and apply yourself but it isn't forced down your throat. One of the absolute funniest things about this is that it is a series. Yes, you heard me right. Every single episode ends on a cliffhanger so you will come back to watch the next one but they just cut it at the most awkward times like this <laughs> I would joke around and say that they filmed the entire season in one go and then they were told, oh, you have to put each episode into 24 minutes. So they said, okay, so wherever that 24 minute mark lay, they just cut it there. And that's how they got their episodes. That is also the joke at the beginning of the episode in case you didn't notice. There are plenty of jokes and they are all right, but a lot of them are aimed at a younger audience, but there are some unintentionally funny moments in this show. One such time is when Rihanna meets an Asian person for the first time. This is how the scene goes. What happened to your eyes? I'm Chinese. Have you never seen a Chinese person before? That is so entirely racist and funny. I cannot believe they could put this in a children's television show. What really gets me is the fact that the Asian lady just understands exactly what Rihanna is talking about and she acts so blasé about it going, oh yeah, I'm just Chinese. She gets asked that all the time. One of the things that really made me laugh in this show is when Paul is visiting Rihanna's house and he's hanging out with her younger brother and sister and he's trying to entertain her. In order to do so, he does this trick. It's an amazing trick. I had to rewatch this episode multiple times in order to figure it out and I will show it to you today. Where's the thumb? You think this hand? Ah, oh, it was in this hand the whole time. You want to try again? Where's the thumb? You think this hand this time? Oh, I didn't put one in this time. Ha <laughs> ha. See, simply brilliant. Even though the show isn't too long, being only 26 episodes, I think it is too long for this particular story. They should not have gone back to our world in the mid-season. They should have definitely spent more time in the Spellbinder world, as that place was a lot more interesting. The time spent in our world is a lot more bland and the jokes are more predictable. Towards the end of the season, however, it does get better when Paul's dad, Brian, starts helping out Ashka. The time before that should have been spent in the Spellbinder world. In the show, there are two main villains. The first is Ashka. She is the one that kidnaps people and is trying to rule Spellbinder as well and she's very cool and well-rounded and interesting character. The other is Griffin. Now that is a shallow character. He is training to be a new spellbinder and he is a jerk to just about everyone else in the show as he thinks he is better than them. He is made even less threatening due to the fact that his single greatest weakness is a slight push. That's all. There are countless times in the show where one or more characters are cornered or trapped and he is around to stop them only for the good guys to push him and he falls over. This happens all the time in many different ways and it's just embarrassing for him. There are also plot conveniences and holes scattered throughout the show. Some of these are continuity, whilst others are just poor writing, but there are a few of them that just don't make any sense. At one point, Rihanna is being held prisoner and she starts screaming out to get help. Ashka then decides to bind her with a bandana, putting it just over her mouth. Not in her mouth, just over her mouth. This wouldn't stop her screaming in the slightest. As you can see, although it's a bit muffled, I can still talk with something over my mouth. But it is a children's show, so I guess I can't complain too much. At one point, Alex and Katrina have to sneak on a different class's field trip by pretending to be other students. This makes no sense! How does the teacher not recognize them as the wrong students? Not on the bus or in the camp or anything. How? There's also this disturbing side plot where Alex and Katrina need radio gear in order to communicate with the Spellbinder world, and one kid's father has this equipment. In order for them to use it, they need to tell him details about their love life and give him recordings of their love conversations. He wants this in order to turn them into a love book that he is writing. This is incredibly creepy and weird on so many levels and it's probably one of the most disturbing plots in the show. After all this, I'm gonna say that this show is kinda worth it. 
and it was really, really hard in order to come up with this decision. This show has competent acting and an intriguing story, though I think more of it should have been spent in the Spellbind world. It has a lot of funny moments and will keep you entertained, but if you did not watch this show as a child, then chances are that you will not care about this show now, which is why it's a kinda worth it. It is also a show that you could only ever really watch once. I would not be going back to the show anytime soon. The pace of the show slows down quite a bit between episodes 14 and 22, because that is the time that Rihanna spends in our world that should definitely have been cut out or replaced with Paul in the Spellbinder world. And then at 22, they all come back and Ashka starts working with Paul's dad in order to create a better power suit. That would have made a much more interesting story. I will say give the show a watch and after two episodes, if you don't like it, then just stop watching. Otherwise, watch it with your friends because there are so many dumb moments of this that you could easily chuckle and like make fun of it. And guys, next week I'm going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to try a trilogy of episodes that are based on the same medium. That's right, an influential game that got turned into a movie and a cartoon series. And we all know what that's going to be. It's... 